you stupid bitch. Yeah, you're a stupid bitch, you stupid bitch. Welcome to this week's episode of Stupid Bitches Say What, the Aussie podcast about everything and nothing, but always with wine, and your hosts, Skylie Collett and Sean Hipkins. This week, it's What's the Haps, the episode where we discuss the topics that piqued our interests over the last four weeks. Listen in while we discuss the new TV show, Fellow Travellers, Matthew Perry, rest in peace, Inside Out 2, Optus Outage, Britney's memoir, Highlights, and Pay It Forward. (laughs) What, pray tell, are you drinking, you stupid bitch? Well, I'm drinking something I have drunk on this podcast quite recently but it's too good to pass up again i'm having a ciroc vodka cider and lime oh lovely and what year is that made it was the 60s it's so fucking good though such good vodka it's nice to just have one of them as well where it's a nice one and then polish off a schmone off afterwards you know i saw what at the pub um, at the first choice the other day, and I can't. I think it was berries flavored or something. Oh yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And That's I was like, I was... isn't that the one Vinny didn't want to get? Yeah, yeah. Would Let not me allow. Another week, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Plain for me, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> mm. But it's a good fucking batch, I have to say. And what about you, you dumb bitch? What are you drinking this time, pray tell? Well, um, my husband went down to the first choice and got me my bottles for this evening. Uh, and I was actually really surprised when I started to pour this. I haven't had a sip yet, so I'm going to wait to have a sip. Um, but can you please um, enlighten us? Is it full strength? It is full strength. Thanks. <laughs> Fuck. But look, it's got a 50% off. He said, to, I said, he said, he gave me the two bottles and he said, I said, which one's the more expensive? And he said, well, this one. And then I looked and it was 50% and it was $7. So it's a $14 bottle, really. <laughs> nice. um, anyway, so this is a Tussock Jumper Travel Edition. It says traveling Ooh. to France. France. I don't think it was made in France. Let me have a look. It's just traveling there. It's just traveling there. Uh, no, it is. Product of France. Fuck off. Um, and then it has like all these bits <laughs> on the back about what flavors are in it and what you should eat it with. So it says it's oh, aromas cool. of melon, black currant, and citrus. And you should drink it when you're eating grilled fish, prawns, or salad. Oh, well, I don't eat any of those, so I'll just drink the wine. It's bottled at the origin, <laughs> if you will. Um, guess what like here how, it is. I like how it gives um pairing recommendations so that's very forward thinking well tyler pointed it out to me this afternoon he was quite impressive it's like they never do that no, sky they What's should this about this is wonderful i love this he's very impressed i think it's a 2021 it's a 2020 oh i can't remember the last time i drank a 2020 Ooh, or anything la. earlier than a 2022 <laughs> hold on to your um, hats so it's a french sauvignon blanc Mm-hmm. Um, let me have a little sip, but it's that yellow color. You know, when you yes. pour it, it's really yellow. So it, that's concerning it's to me. It's a bit wee Yeah. Is it going to have aftertaste? It's going to have a real. It's very yellow. <sighs> Let's give it. And it was reduced to down to $7 and it's from 2020. So it's been sitting there for a mm. while and they reduced it because they got to get rid of it. Yeah. It's not popular, I feel. <laughs> it doesn't get better with age. Oh, the smell's not great. Hang on. Oh, it's a bit vinegary, is it? (laughs) I wouldn't say vinegar. I would I would say it's very close to a shardy taste. Oh, it's getting a bit stale. Well, it's a bit nasty, but it's okay. I'll push through. Push through. Well, look, at least you had it for your second bottle. Yes. And it's a 2020, so hurrah! (laughs) Hurrah, I say. (laughs) So how's your week been, stupid bitch? week has been good so i've got um a couple of little stories first one is a new tv show that so whilst i'd caught up on my reality show while shows while Vinny was away i started flicking through paramount um which is 
We got totally. Really to oh, I it. think it's one of my most favorite. Providers. We've had it for ages though, and we've a little bit exhausted it. So when we were looking at reducing them, you still um, didn't watch all my shows on there, did you? That school spirits, did you? No, but we have some different tastes. You and I sometimes we're on the same. I think page. you would have liked School Spirits. You should have given it a crack. Look, I'll probably like reinstate it in the next month or so when I get bored with everything else, but. Well, a new show that I saw appear on there and I thought, you know what? I found some cool shows on Paramount. Give it a crack. It's called The Curse and it's got Emma Stone in it. Oh, so I've seen it advertised, but it looks like it's like a reality, not a reality TV show, but like a doco style thing. It kind of is. Yes. Yeah. So, and I love Emma Stone. I think she's great. Um, Anyways. I've watched the first episode. It's pretty cool. I think it's going to be a good one. I've only got one episode out at the moment or at the time of this recording. It's a satirical black comedy about Emma and her new husband, who is a complete dick in it. And they have this new reality show that they are filming called Flipanthropy, um, where they use their property development company. So it's all fake, like it's all fiction. They use their property development company to try and help locals with their living situations and whatnot, and they film it. Anyways, they film her husband. One part of it is, is they the guy, the director, gets the husband to go buy stuff from a little kid in a car park, a little um, kid who's selling cans of Sprite or some shit, to show that he's got a nice side to him and whatnot. And he gives her some money, and she's like, oh, my God, I just got $100. I got $100. Hey, pa, rah, 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 I've got 100 bucks. Then he thinks he's done filming. He's going back to me. He's like, can I have the 100 back? I didn't have... Any other note, I need the 100 back. I'll give you 20 bucks and I'll buy all six cans of Sprite. She's like, no, if you're giving me 100 now, blah, blah, blah. And he back, keeps arguing with her. She's like six or something. And he rips the 100 bucks out of her hands. And she's from a Latino background. And so she turns to him and she's like, I put a curse on you, basically. You know, I'm cursing you, yada, yada, yada. <laughs> um, and I get, I'm guessing that that is based on the title of the show comes into play throughout the series hence the name the curse but it's good so far i would recommend trying it out the other thing i wanted to talk about was i had liberated myself probably yesterday i think i made this decision from my social media and my my app more my app commitments that i have on my phone so i've got pokemon go wordle sudoku other new york times (laughs) daily games where you get streaks for doing them every day and if you you know I don't want to miss out on new Pokemons or challenges they offer and all this shit. And it always seems like fun. And while I enjoy the game itself, I actually didn't realize how stressful it actually is making sure I don't break my streak or, (laughs) you know, I'm not going to fuck with missing out on the monthly set of games to get my bonuses and completing them all. And I actually feel a real big sense of relief that I've let them go. Like, I'm just like, I'm not tied to them anymore. And like, I feel like, I don't have to make time in my day. Oh, fuck, I haven't done my word or I haven't done this. I've got to go in there and do this and I've got to make sure I don't forget this. It's been really nice. It's like a literal weight off my shoulder. I still haven't let go of my Duolingo yet. I'm on a 301 day streak with that. It's hard to break at this point, but I feel like I might look at taking the pressure off there soon as well and just being like, it's okay. It's okay if you go back down to zero. Well, it's not going to change. You're going to be okay. It's like okay. when you um, used to build the farms, remember, and you had to be on there every day. But then 100. if you missed a couple of days, the cleanup from rotting. that yeah. and having to get rid of the rotted ones and replant them and yeah. try to get the ones that were still alive. And then you missed out on the dollars and it was so stressful and was so time consuming to just harvest your farm and shit. You were just like in your the fake end. fake like, farm. Yeah. Yeah, so I actually feel like, yeah, I'm sort of getting my life. I feel good. I feel okay. <laughs> It's okay. Wow, well, congratulations Thank to you. Thank you. I recommend doing it. I don't want to be a slave has... to the, you know, the the timer on a phone anymore in a game. Tyler does his streaks on his games too. Like he's always mm. like, we'll be watching a movie and all of a sudden the phone will come up and I'm a Nazi on the phone. I'm like, get off the phone. We're yeah. having our time. I don't have my phone anywhere near me. And he's like, I just got to get my free games. I just got to get yeah. my free coins. Yeah, I know. And like, that's another thing too, is it takes over watching TV shows because I'm always on there doing this or doing another crossword that I've got to get done that day, that daily crossword, you know, and so (laughs) I'm like, okay, I'm okay. And it's actually okay. I'm not dead. (laughs) Well, I'm glad you're not dead. (laughs) How about you? How's your week been? Well, my week, I want to tell you a little bit of a story. So um, last week, the week before last, actually, 
I got my car serviced. So I was down, I, I drove to the Central Coast a couple of weeks ago um, and it was raining at the time that I drove down and my windscreen wipers were fucked because I had my car was overdue for a service only by like a month. Um, and so I was like, I said, I rang Tyler on the way and I was like, book it in, book it in for next week when I come back from the coast. So we booked it in. That was fine. Took it down, um, got it serviced. And the guy said to me, when I went to pick it up, he said to me, look, um, your battery's on its way out. It's probably got three to six months left, but I'm just letting you know your battery's on its way. And I was like, sweet, sweet. That's fine. Look, I've had it for a while. And then I did the maths on it. And I was like, fuck, I remember when I got it changed because it died when I first moved to the central coast, which was nearly seven years ago now, because I've been wow. back for two years and I was there for five. Um, so almost five. So I've had it for about seven, six or seven years, that battery. And they don't really That's last that long, right? Yeah, usually it's about three, a, four years. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I was like, eh, look, if the battery goes, the battery goes. Anyway, so I go, I walk back to my car, pay my bill, yada, yada, get in, start the car on it. And the guy who had just served me, he was walking out to work on another car and it, I turned it over, or well, I pressed the button and it's like, uh, 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 and he just <laughs> looked at me and shrugged. It was like, hold on. So he runs back in, comes out with a charger and, um, he's like, oh, look, I'll, I'll reset it for you. Anyway. So he resets the battery and that's all fine. And it starts going. And I said, he said, oh, you should be right now. And I said, oh, so should I drive it around for a little bit to keep like the charge going and mm. stuff like that? He's like, yeah, yeah, sure, whatever. Drive it around if you want. So I was like, oh, okay. So I come home, <laughs> grab Tyler. And I said, let's just go get a takeaway for dinner. I've got to drive the car around. So we went down to the water for a bit, drove up to Wellington Point. So we drove it for probably about 15, 20 minutes before turning it off. Turned it off at Wellington Point um, Shopping Village went in, got our China, well, I got noodles, yada, yada. Um, it came back, it started perfectly fine. But I remember when I got home, I was like, I have this feeling it's not going to start in the morning. Tomorrow, yeah. So sure enough, I walk out to work, press the button to turn the car on and nothing. It was just completely wow. dead. Yeah. So I rang the guy and I was like, look, it's dead. And he's like, oh, we're going to, you know, have to, um, what do you call it, jumpstart it jump started yeah. like to get it down because I could I didn't want to pay for a tow so I was like fine 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 so I went into work that day got do you not have roadside like assistance um I don't think I do at the moment actually mm. so we um, got it through our normal insurance through UE oh as an add-on like that you no it's through? just part of it yeah, yeah that's oh wow okay I don't yeah. know that I might um, but anyway, so we went and got the battery changed on the Friday and I worked from home that day and that was fine. So I ended up putting my car in for a service and it was about $350, $380. Went back, um, paid for the battery, which was about $360. Um, so that was fine. I was like, look, I didn't really, my car's been really good to me, touch fucking wood. So it's not like I've spent a lot of it in the last few years at all. I just do the regular services you know, bits and pieces that they need to do and it's fine. It doesn't really, you know, like cost me an astronomical amount. So I was like, it's it's time for me to have to spend a little bit of money on it. Mm. So then that was fine. Um, get home in the afternoon, check the mail, open it up, saw something that's come from, um, you know, from somewhere in Brisbane City. And I was like, what the fuck is this? And I open it and it's a mobile phone. Oh, oh you got done for being on the phone. Guess how much it was, the bill. They're not it light. Five hundred? Higher. Seven hundred. Higher. Eleven. Eleven hundred dollars. Eleven hundred and sixty-eight to be exact. And it was when I was coming back from the central coast because I was on my shitty old phone. Remember when it got smashed yeah. and the charge kept going. So I couldn't, I needed it to navigate and, you know, do shit while I was driving home. So I had to have it charged the whole time and it had to be connected. Otherwise it kept dying and I didn't have like sat nav to get me home from the coast, even though it's on the highway most of the way. And I know most of the ways, but you know, like you still need to know and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. You still need to know like where you're going and, and that when you're driving that massive distance, like it's a nine and a half hour drive. So, and there's a photo like full <laughs> thing of me with it on my leg, the charger's coming in plugged into the sides. And so my friend recently got off one. She got done by a mobile camera in New South Wales and she said it was her wallet and they ended up like comping it back. 
and saying, yeah, we accept that, which it wasn't. It was totally her phone. Um, <laughs> and I messaged her. I was like, hey, do you think I can get out of this? And Todd's like, you're not fucking getting out of it. You can see the charger. There's a card called into the it. Side. So my Was car, it just sat on your leg though? It was sat on the, my thigh. And were you touching it or anything? No, I wasn't touching it. Well, that's a bit shit. You could just say it was, but I guess it's still the distraction, isn't it? Yeah, I know. But I've no one to blame but myself. It was me. And Tyler was like, oh, didn't you see um, the mobile phone cameras? You can really tell what they look like, Sky, like they're obvious. I was like, I was like, I was like five hours into my drive from the <laughs> Central Coast on a Monday night just wanting to get home and get out of the fucking car. Like, of course, I didn't notice any of that. Yeah, I kind of feel like the phone should be in your hand or something like that to get done for it. Yeah, Not maybe just sitting I could on your try leg. to dispute it. Maybe I should. Yeah. Um, but I don't know. Anyway, so that's how my week was. <laughs> <laughs> should we get into our topics? Please, please. You go first. Okay, so I'm going to do fellow travellers. And excuse me if I lose my breath during this segment. Ooh. You'll find out why. So another TV Is it show. Old as fuck? <laughs> So another TV show I started watching this week. It's been a good week of TV for me, please. But this one is really <laughs> That's you've done. fucking good. What you else have do you do? You to replace your game hiatus with TV shows. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But now I'm actually watching them you know, instead of being on the games. So it's called Fellow Travellers. Again, it's on Paramount Plus and there's three episodes out so far. The next one's out tomorrow, which I'm very, very excited about. It stars Matt Boomer who is just a fine you fucking specimen him, of yeah, a man. Well, him. look, I've always, I don't think anyone can deny he's a very attractive, very beautiful man. He's, he's a good looking guy. He's not my cup of tea. I get what you're saying, tea. but you can't say he's ugly, right? you got to say he's a good looking guy. I guess. He's not my type. He's not someone that I would go, oh, that's Matt Boma. He's hot. Like, well, he's not my thing. But I understand why you think he's aesthetic. Well, it, well it's pleasing. funny you say that because while he is attractive, I've never really been like, Paul pass about him or anything like that. But I can appreciate that he is a very good looking guy until now. Fuck me. I'm calling Hall pass stat. <laughs> so, but I'll get to that. It also stars Jonathan Bailey. Do you know Jonathan Bailey? Mm-hmm. He was in Bridgerton. You know how Bridgerton was a huge Never show. Watched it. We watched one episode and Vinny was like, yeah, I'm out after five minutes. I watched the first episode and I didn't watch any after that, but I know he's been big from that. And I think that's when he shot to fame. But he's also be, he's all also being Wicked Part One, the musical that's become the movie, which I'm looking forward to, comes out next year, um, and a few other movies and TV shows like Broadchurch, etc. Anywho, I think I'll try to find gravity, gravity, and you can't bring me, me down. down. <laughs> wow. Anyhow. I've known about this show, Fellow Travellers, for a while because there's been a lot of hype about it in the gay community as Boomer and Bailey are lovers in it, Mm. but it's more than than that. So Matt Boomer is gay in real life though, isn't he? Yeah, and I think Jonathan Bailey is too. Gotcha. So the premise of the show is it's set between the 50s and the 80s and it's a real, really a historical romance political thriller based on a novel of the same name. It centres on the decades-long romance between the two men who meet at a, as a chance encounter in Washington, D.C. in the 50s during the height of McCarthyism, McCarthyism, which is basically when they were trying to whittle out communists right after the Cold War had started. Do you remember that was a huge thing in America as well? You commie and all this shit. Oh, yeah, because I it, watch the Americans. Duh. Yes, well, of course. So a lot of it goes over my head like of the time or what was going on politically until you watch it and start learning. If you watch the Americans, like I fucking told you to, you would understand a lot more about <laughs> I the understand. Was. When is the Americans set? I think it's 80, 79 okay. or 80. Yeah. So this is a few decades before then when they were really in, getting the fear through it, um, Americans about it. But it's still interesting to watch. And McCarthy, is it, who they call McCarthyism after, is a senator at the time that's basically hunting these people down. And a fellow traveller was a term that they'd use for a person who's not a member of a political, a particular group or political party, especially the Communist Party, but who sympathises with the group's aims and policies. Anywho, I've seen all three apps so far. I've actually watched them twice. <laughs> But I'll give you just a quick <laughs> overview 
of what happens in the first episode so I don't spoil anything. And this won't give away much, but the first episode starts in the 80s. And Matt Boomer, is his character's name is Hawkins Fuller. He's at some big soiree in the backyard of his mansion. He's married. He has kids. He's got grandkids. I like the and, name. Yeah. And someone, yeah, I like that too, actually, Hawkins. Yeah. Um, and they call him Hawk. Um, oh, I like that. Yeah. And someone he knows from his past arrive. And his wife's like, oh, look, there's, I can't remember his name, blah, blah. And he looks up and it's from his past past. So, you know, he doesn't want his wife to really be involved in what the chat's about. So they go off and have a chat. And this guy tells him that Tim, who's Bailey's character, is ill and wanted to give you something. And he hands him this sort of package and he opens up the package. And in the package is this glass paperweight that has a picture of the White House in it. Um, and you kind of get the idea from the conversation that Tim has AIDS or HIV at this point and that Hawkins, and he's sort of given the message that he doesn't want Hawkins to contact him. He uh, doesn't want to speak to him. He's just given him this thing back. Then it flashes back to when they first meet in the 50s, when Eisenhower is elected president and they're at a victory party for McCarthy. Hawkins ends up getting Tim a job. So they have a little flirty thing at the party. Then they meet up again um in the park and he gives hawk he gets hawkins um tim's details and hawkins gets him a job working for mccarthy as kind of a junior assistant type of thing um and then it goes on from there so tim's a devout catholic so he's battling with being gay and his faith etc it's a time when being gay is a complete no-go like no one can be gay there's no like little clubs that you can go to to san francisco and be out and happy and shit. People who were suspected of being gay were investigated, interrogated, and lost their jobs, and there's some of that throughout the first couple of episodes. It's fucked. Anywho, the first scene between them having a session has Hawkins arriving at Tim's apartment, and he knows he's gay. He can pick up that he's gay, so he's like, start flirting with him and shit like that, and Matt Boomer's character, Hawkins, is very dominant-aggressive, um, it's got sort of vibes of Fifty Shades of Grey, but not as fantasy and not mm. as full on. Um, so anyway, he's kind of flirting with him and Tim's kind of freaked out by him. And he sort of says to him, um, will you kiss me? And he's like, no, 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 I'm not kissing you, blah, blah, blah. Then they keep talking. And then at one point, Tim sat in the chair and Hawkins is standing over him, like fully sort of standing over him. And he's like, is this okay? And Tim just looks up at him and he's like, yeah. <laughs> then he jumps up and they start kissing and shit like that. And it's just fully hot. Um, the chemistry between the two of them is full on. Boomer's character, Hawkins, is this dominant daddy type. And it's fucking hot. They kiss, and when Tim's taking off Hawkins' clothes, he's like, now fold my pants. And he's like, look at him like, what the fuck? And he's like, fold my pants. So he folds his pants and puts them down. Um, he's being dead serious. And, like, he just dominates him in a way that is, you know, super hot. hot. I'm going all red. Look at my face. <laughs> <laughs> at one point. Oh, this really ruffled up your feathers, well, didn't you know, it? It was the same, like, with Fifty Shades. You know how it's just sort of got that, oh, you know, like, mm take control at one point they've had it after they've had a few sessions um boom is going to this some big wig political party and tim wants to go and he starts calling him after the first episode too he starts calling him skippy because of his tim's like a nerdy type of character and so that's his pet name for him skippy and hawkins is this confident fucking hot success story so hawkins gets him gets um, Tim to take his pants off in this one scene and then he sits in a chair and he taps his leg to signal for Tim to sit down who just obediently goes and sits down and is still talking to him and shit sits on his leg and Tim's like I want to go to the party and he's like no you can't come to the party Skippy you know you can't it's just not going to work and then Tim's like I'm your boy right and Hawkins like yeah and he goes well your boy wants to come to the party and he starts moving his heads down to Hawkins crotch he's there in his boxes and he says um, but Hawkins has lost control at this point. Mm -hmm. So he sort of pushes um, Tim back. So he falls back. He's on his knees. And he just leans back. And then he just puts his foot up onto his shoulder, which is in the sock. And he's like, take it off. <laughs> so he takes the sock off and shit. And he's like, now suck it. Like suck his foot. He starts sucking his foot. So he gains back control and shit like that. Um, and then he's like, well, I guess you could come along. 
I could give you a suit and a tie, find you a beard for the night, which is a woman to masquerade as his date. And then he says to him, now show me what my boy really wants. And Tim just lunges for his groin area. And it's really fucking hot. And he says to him while he's down there, Tim's like, um, Hawkins is like, I suppose I can take my boy to the party then. Does it want to smell? Does it want my smell on him while we're at the party for people to smell? Does it want my taste on his mouth while it's while he's talking to people? It's just like you gotta watch it. It's like really intense. Just oh like God. Jesus Christ. Yeah. Anyway, there's a lot of side stories about the politic politics of the time and different cal- characters, the gay agenda and shit. And back and then which are very interesting as well. It's not just this whole dominant thing. And then it goes back into the 80s and Hawkins is making his way to San Francisco to try and see Tim. He wants to see him. He ends up at a cafe and he makes a call to Tim and he's saying to him, I want to see you, I'm here, blah, 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 blah. I'm at this cafe and I'll be here all day. Call me if you want me to see you. And then Tim just hangs up the phone. And then the episode's finished where you see Hawkins just sat at this cafe table looking at the phone booth, waiting for it to ring. And I'll just leave it at that. But yeah, it's a really good show. On top of the heat of it and all, it gets five star reviews from all the places at the moment. And Daddy Boomer, you're now my hall pass. Congratulations. <laughs> I'm looking at the imagery and just from how you were telling me about it, I was expecting, I don't know, something different. But it's not like so when you look at the imagery of it, he you can looks sort of exactly see exactly the same. Matt Boomer, like he looks like that pretty boy look about him. You've got to watch it. Like he's full on, it's not like full on BDSM where he's like fucking, what's a guy from Fifty Shades? Mr. Grey or whatever his name is. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I forget his name. It's not yeah. that too fucking intense or something. It's just he's, the, I don't know. It's just the the chemistry between the two of them. It's just this guy, yeah. I think Vinny was Jamie asleep. Jamie Dornan is that. Jamie Vinny, Dornan, yeah. the actor. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, Vinny was asleep when I went and had a look after we filmed the other episodes. So I hope he's still asleep while I'm recording this. <laughs> <laughs> but Jesus Christ, oh! I was watching it. I was watching it. And then I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> I'd have to rewind it, put subtitles on so I could see what they were saying. And I was like, oh my God. It's <laughs> going on here. hot and bothered. <laughs> It's very like, and the the TV show itself, the what's going on is just really interesting. It's not just this whole stupid sexual thing, but like mm. when you see this subs plot of it, you're just like, holy mm. hell, mm. yeah, it's very um very intense. I was and I think him to look a little bit rougher and older, but he just looks like a baby. Well, watch it, and you'd see how he actually portrays it. But I think as well, it goes over the 70s and the 60s you see their relationship going because something's obviously happened like Mm -hmm. he's throughout it he's like we can't actually have this life Jonathan Bailey's character wants to be with him and he wants to go to dinner with him and he wants to stay in his room instead of having to finish at 12 o'clock and escape down the fire escape in the middle of the night and not wake up there and next morning and have people looking at them or knowing or finding out what they are and shit so I think um he screws him over obviously a few times over the decades to the point where he doesn't want to see him again. Sure. You gotta you gotta watch it. Like I was the same. I thought always thought Matt Boomer was an attractive man, but I never really thought, oh yeah. But Jesus Christ, after watching that. <laughs> it's got your panties in a twist. It does indeed. <laughs> It's just how, like, it, it, that's what I was trying to explain. I was trying to put it towards the Fifty Shades of Grey. You know how that turned on all these women mm, mm. and shit like that? Just like, oh, oh hot and I flustered. didn't like the films, um, and I only read the first two books by the third. Uh, the th- I couldn't get through the third one. It was too. Ugh. Yeah, Vinny was the same. He he engulfed the first two books. Yes, I engulfed the, the second one I thought was a bit shitty. The first one, I couldn't put it down. I was like, and I was getting hot and bothered when I was reading. I was like, yeah. oh, I feel fluttery. <laughs> Well, that's the same with the watching this. It's just the same thing. Like, oh my goodness. Like, I mean, if so, if, if any tried any of that, we like, fuck off, get your foot off me. I'm going to take your sock off. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. <sighs> okay. So, um, my topic I'm going to talk about Matthew Perry, rest in peace. Mm. Dear friends, star. What a shock um, that was, hey? Oh, wow. 
I think I think a lot of people are still reeling from that one. It's been what at, at the time of us doing this, it's probably been three weeks ish. Oh well, this comes out yeah in at the first week of December, I think. On yeah, the first. so it's going to be about two months since he's passed by the yeah. time it comes out. So it's still it's about been about three weeks, so I'd say since he passed away. Well, I was on the coast when it happened. So, yeah, it was about three weeks ago and um, Tyler messaged me and I got the message from Tyler saying, um, actually, I think maybe something came up on my phone first, but at the same time, a message from Tyler came up at the same time, like within a couple of minutes of each other and Tyler was like, what the fuck? And I was like, whoa. And I remember I was with Mel and I just went, Mel, Matthew Perry's dead. She's like, what? So it was quite shocking to hear um, and very, very sad because, you know, he was one of my fave characters in the yeah. show. Um, and so fans around the world were saddened to hear of his passing. Um, I think they're saying it's drowning at the moment. Yeah. Um, I don't know if they've officially released his cause of death, but they're saying he's drowned. In there the was no tub. drugs found at the site and stuff like that. Um, he posted recently on his Instagram about enjoying his new luxury item, his spa, you know, a couple of days before um, and, and posted a picture of him in there. And then, you know, a couple of days later he was dead. And I believe um, that the person that found him unresponsive had tried to revive him. So there might've been signs that he, you know, wasn't completely passed, but by the time, um, you know, he. And they could have done a bit of a, a sweep. AKA coffin confessor. Potentially, yeah. yeah. Um, but attempts to resuscitate him were really unsuccessful. Um, so if you've been following the story in the media, the Friends cast came out a couple of days after and said, look, um, their publicists came together collectively and released uh, or issued a, a press release from all of them. A joint five statement. Of them saying that they were still grieving and dealing with the loss um, and that they couldn't comment right now because they were just processing it and that they would come out publicly and release something at a later date. But right now, just please, you know, respect their privacy, yada, yada. Give um, space. Exactly. But this week, all the posts from the five remaining cast members of Friends has come out. Have you seen any of that? No, I haven't. So I believe, I can't remember who started it. I know Jennifer Aniston's post was the last one that came out, but they all came out within, I think, maybe two days, a couple of hours between each one of them. Um, But it was incredibly heartbreaking to read the post. So I came home from work yesterday and Tyler said to me, oh, my God, have you seen the Friends posts have all come out? about Matthew Perry's passing. And I said, oh, my God, I didn't. I've been so busy this week. I haven't been hardly on social media. So I sat there last night and went through them all. And I follow Courtney Cox and I follow um, Lisa Kudrow, but I don't follow any of the others. So as soon as I opened my Instagram, the first two posts in a row that came up on my feed was Courtney Cox and then Lisa Kudrow. So I read through those like welling up with tears about Mm -hmm. the words that they said. It was really, really, really sad and really beautiful. And then I went and searched the other cast members and read theirs. Um, But everything that they posted was just really sad and really like Mm. they quoted, you know, things from the show and it was really carefully worded in a really loving It would have to be. Yeah, they'd have to have been fucking so gone over a fine tooth comb what they'd said i think it was because they all talked about a 10 years together like the show because in the reunion i don't know if you remember um matthew perry came out and said he basically hadn't really seen much of them in the whole 10 years and everyone knows that courtney cox and jennifer aniston are still really really close um lisa kudrow's in there as well i think the three of the girls still stay in quite close contact but the boys sort of all went their separate ways and um, particularly Matthew Perry didn't really stay in touch with any of them and had his own, you know, personal demons and problems and things like that. So he had openly said something about not really speaking to them. So most of the wording through it was like the 10 years on the show and they Mm. said things like that, like they had, I guess it, it was, it was like it had been carefully reviewed before they had posted it, but mm. they didn't want to, I guess, betray his memory by pretending that they were all great friends now. Yeah, yeah. They just because talked it, about the 10 years of their life they spent together and what a meaningful experience it was, yada, yada. Because what they had 
would have posted would have been ripped to fucking shreds by people. Without a doubt, without yeah. a doubt. And it probably is like I don't like to read comments sometimes underneath what people post because you get so many haters. Everything yeah. you put, doesn't matter you what think you something's say. nice and you look under it and you hear all these people saying horrible things about yeah. political things or agenda yeah. things and it's just, yeah, um, keyboard warriors. But I felt very moved by the posts that um, they had put on. And then I finished Gilmore Girls last night. I'd gone through the whole series. <laughs> For <laughs> the 17th the, time. Watch the, yeah, at least. Watch the revival series um, over the last week. So I'd finished it. I'd, I had the last episode of the revival series to watch. Watch that early in the evening. And then the next thing that came up, like my, rec- you know, when it goes, when you finish a show, a, yeah. like the season. How about you watch? Well, it just came up. It just came up with bits and pieces. So Netflix is doing a thing. I don't know if you've been on Netflix lately, but the first thing that comes on when you log on to Netflix lately is Friends. Right. Um, It's the one that they're advertising. And so as soon as Gilmore Girls finished, it went into like a bit of a montage of some of Chandler Bing's Mm. best moments. And I went, oh, look, it's early. I'm just going to put it on. And I had started watching Friends uh, maybe six, 12 months ago, and I'd skipped the first two seasons, like the early ones. You know, I just was like, oh, it's a little bit dated. So I'd already gone to the third season. So I started back where I'd missed, where I'd started off a little while ago. And it was the third season. Um, and it was halfway through the first episode and I just put it on just to, for something to watch while I was scrolling through my phone. Mm. And before I knew it, phone aside, I was just sat there. I was cracking up laughing. I had tears in my eyes at some of the parts in the wow. episode. And then I ended up having a shower, getting into bed and Tyler was like, what are you doing? And I was like, I just want to put friends on for a little while. Like, I just feel like really nostalgic. Yeah. yeah. And then I need to watch it. And it just we've talked before on the show a couple of times about how dated some of the views are yeah. on friends and how, you know, you couldn't get away with a lot of the things these days, but from where I got to in season three, it was perfection, like his yeah. delivery. And they talked about that in their posts that they put on Instagram that he, and it's come out a few times in the reunion and other stuff in the media before his death, he, um, you know, what's the word I'm looking for? He was obsessed with the fact that if a joke didn't land, he took that really personally. Yes, but he did a lot of his own jokes. What, oh, what's okay. the word I'm looking Improvised. for? Improvised. Improv, yeah. So he improved a lot of stuff. And what, on Courtney Cox's post, he was saying about how she he used to whisper lines that he thought would be funny in her ear and she would say them that he had made up for her. And you can see when you're oh, watching wow. it, some of the times where their reaction is actually quite like, they Real. look like they're reacting as well. Yeah, like yeah, now yeah. that I know that I was watching it and um, they all just basically said he was pretty much a comedic genius. Yeah, yeah. Like he was so clever and witty and it was really, really sad, but also really beautiful. And yeah. I was really, I'm actually super enjoying watching it yeah. because I'm just like watching him and you know, it's like when anyone passes away really young, you can't really believe it. Like I still can't believe Heath Ledger's dead. Yeah, I still yeah. can't believe that Robin Williams is dead. Yeah. You know, they're two ones that really rocked me quite hard when they passed away, um, particularly Robin Williams. I can't even watch his movie. Especially anymore. because of how he died as well. It's yeah, heartbreaking. It is incredibly heartbreaking, but um, I'm just, it's just really sad. I'm really yeah. Sad. I, he was um, gone too soon. He was 52, wasn't he? 52 yeah. or 54? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was quite young for our standards as well. <laughs> as in like, you know, when you're 20 and someone dies at 52, you don't go, oh, that's young. But when no, you're but our age, you go, that's young. When you're as close to 50 as you are, you're like, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> that is super young. <laughs> Creeping up on me. Yeah. I, um, I started doing the Friends journey recently because, as I've said many a times, Finney and I, do a lot of true crime so like mm. when we go to bed Vinny's like put on a murder put on a murder and we've exhausted so many true crime shows and he's specific about his murders he needs to know that that they catch the killer he doesn't want to know who the killer is at the beginning he wants to go through the journey and it's hard like when you've watched as much fucking true crime as we have to find that so when you've exhausted those options and you're trying to find another series that satisfies the needs and it's not an annoying fucking narrator and all that shit every now and then i try to find can we just branch into another show we'll watch a murder later of course but like let's try and do something and i know he loved friends and i started watching we started watching it 
probably about six months ago as well. And I think we got through the first season and it just dropped off. We might pick it up again and give it another crack because it think... is. There's a lot of fun stuff. And it's always that whole nostalgia thing too when you go back to mm. when you first watched it and you think of the emotions and where you were at the time when you're watching it Yeah, yeah. for the well, first time. I remember working at Target. So I was in probably grade 10 and this older girl who worked with me, who I thought was really super cool, she came into work one time and I was at Target doing, I used to just organize the clothes racks. That was my job there. I had a white glove and I used to dust things off and I used to, and it was the boringest (laughs) job in the world and I fucking hated it. Um, And she came in, she was like the senior and she, she started talking about how hilarious Phoebe was. And I remember thinking, what's this show she's talking about? And she's like, you've got to watch it. And she was telling me how amazing it was. And I remember going home and putting it on. And by then I think it was close, it was probably halfway through the first season and putting it on and being like, this show is amazing. And this was probably after it'd been in America for six months. Yeah, yeah. I was probably about 15, 14 even. No, I would have been a bit, I probably was about 16 I think it was actually. 95, 96 that came out. Um, and was just obsessed with it. And then I probably watched Friends over the years. Oh, so many times I've lost count of how many times. And I could, and I can start an episode and tell you exactly how it's going to go yeah. and quote lines that are going to happen throughout it. That's how many times I've the watched it. The one with dot, dot, dot. Yeah. yeah. And um, so it's definitely a show that we've grown up with. So it's just, yeah, it's just really sad. But before we move on, I just want to say one other thing about him. Have you ever seen the film Fools Rush In with Selma Hayek? Selma Hayek. No, I don't think so. Like I remember his The Whole Nine Yards and stuff like that. The thing I found was difficult and it's a lot of the times when it he came was to typecast wasn't he it was, just, it was happened a lot of the times with people who move from tv to movies mm. when especially back in the 90s and early noughties is they were pretty much making it that character because they knew they were bringing in the bucks he could never get past that character he was yeah. always that character and everything he started and look yeah. in fool's rush in he is very much you know the outfits that he wore with the big jackets and the yeah. pants that niched at the waist and stuff yeah. like that. Um, but he did actually, whilst he looked exactly the same as he did on Friends, he did move away from that character a little bit enough to make it a really good movie. And I always really loved this film. Like when I was younger, I thought it was a beautiful love story, just loved everything about it. And then when we moved to Brisbane, when we were living with my sister and my brother-in-law, we were looking for a film that all four of us could watch one night. And someone, I can't remember who mentioned Fool's Rush In. And Aaron, my brother-in-law was like, oh, that's one of my favourite movies of all time. And I was like, what the fuck? It's like a rom-com from like early 2000s. I can't believe that you love that. And he was like, Obviously, he loves it because he loves Selma Hayek. Um, and it's so, probably something from his childhood too that he he's like got that yeah. nostalgia with, yeah. And so we got my niece up and we forced her to watch it with us. She walked out after about half an hour. She's like, this is not for me. I'm not interested. But the four of us sat there and watched it and thoroughly enjoyed it. So I've seen it quite recently in the last two years. And I remember watching it thinking, yes, it's dated and old, but it's still a really lovely, feel-good film. And then after I saw last night all um, the posts that all the Friends cast had done, I wondered if Selma Hayek, I don't follow her on Instagram, mm. I wondered if she'd posted something. So I went, you know, searching on the internet to see if I could find her and I did and sure enough it came up and she had a post about saying like it was two days after he'd passed and she said, look, it's taken me a couple of days before I could actually, you know, come up with the words and be able to pay him tribute. But she did a beautiful, beautiful post about saying how, they kept in touch all these years. He was quoted in an interview quite recently when he was asked what's his favourite movie that he did other than Friends, and he said it was Fool's Rush In. Oh, and wow. she saw the interview and reached out to him and was like, dude, I can't believe after all the stuff that you've done this that is you one of your favorites. that film that yeah. you actually love. And he was like, yeah, just was a really happy movie and I'm just really glad that I did it with you. And they've, had, they've oh, continued nice. their friendship and it was absolutely beautiful and i just was so moved by it all and i just feel really fucking sad about the whole thing yeah it is sad so i'll get on to something a little bit more happier r.i.p m m m perry um inside out too so first of all have you seen inside out no Pixar movie no have you not it is one of the great pixar movies and i've seen a lot of pixar movies and i was obsessed with them when they first came out 
Um, but this one came out, I think Inside Out came out in 2015. So I remember I watched it. I know of it. Like yes. everybody knows of it, about the feelings, about. Yes, the emotions and that. So I watched it in um when we were at our other house and it was just a really, really great movie. It's not kitty. It's not dumb. It's not stupid. It's actually a very enjoyable movie. Highly recommend you watch it. See, I so, feel really weird watching those movies now when I don't have little kids that I'm forced yes. to watch it with. Do you know what I, mean? I know like, what you I mean. I always had to do it. And yeah. now I'm like, oh, cartoon, no thanks. <laughs> yeah, but it's actually really good. And as I said, it's one of the great Pixar movies. And it focuses on a little girl who is uprooted from her Midwest life and has to move to San Francisco with the parents, I think because of a job opportunity for the dad or something. Can't remember exactly. It's been a while. But she ends up becoming quite sad of it because of it, because she's lost a friend. She's lost her way of life, her normal way of life and whatnot. And it focuses on her depression a lot of which is pretty groundbreaking groundbreaking for a kid's movie, especially at the time. So, and we're introduced to her emotions as part of it inside which her head. characters, right? Yes. And so, like, in the first one, there's joy, fear, anger, and disgust, and sadness. They're the five emotions that all go around in her head. Joy is voiced by Amy Pulner, Pulmer. Sorry. Fear is Bill Hader. Um, anger is Lewis Black, who I don't really know. Disgust is Mindy you mean Amy Poehler. Yeah, Amy Poehler. Sorry. Oh my god, I was like, I love she's, Amy Poehler. She's like one of my favorite people of all time. She's awesome. You know who Bill Hader is too, right? Yeah, of course. Yeah, I totally know who Bill. Lewis is. Black, I don't know who he is. Mindy Kaling, who's oh, yeah. Mindy, of course. And sadness is voiced by Phyllis Smith, who's from The Which Office. The office, yes, yeah. I did and, know that. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Anyways, the emotions live in headquarters in a head they have like a control panel and all this shit and making sure they control their emotions based on <laughs> what what the child's doing and the control center is inside riley's mind and riley's the girl where they help advise her through everyday life and as riley and her emotions struggle to adjust to her new life in san francisco turmoil and shoes in headquarters and although joy riley's main and most important emotion tries to keep things positive um, the emotions conflict on how to best navigate a new city, house and school and shit like that. And so that's why her emotions all become messed up. And it's really clever how they do it. They have show you how core memories are formed and all this shit. And you know how Pixar is very, very clever in the way that they do their, mm. their movies. Like they're very, the intricate yes. details and all that shit. So it's and just make it really humorous for adults as well. Exactly. So bearable. Yeah. But the things are real as well. Like, so it's very clever how they do it with the core memories and all that shit. But her Riley, the girl's depression is taking over. So the one who play who's played by Phyllis Smith, sadness. sadness. And Joy has to try and figure out how she can get Riley to be happy again and go you go on an adventure through her mind and things are happening where core memories are becoming a distant feature there's happiness happiness lands that are built in a memory based on happy memories that are all crumbling and falling and shit like that and then there's poor bing bong which is one of the characters and that's all i'll say if you haven't seen it but yeah anyway joy's trying to save core memories and make her happy again that's the first film then the second one is now eight years later since the first one happened and the sequel's coming out in june next year and the so she's a teenager She's a teenager now, and the tra trailer has just dropped, and people are frothing over it. So headquarters is starting to go under a sudden demolition to make way for some new, entirely, entirely new emotions coming into it, including anxiety, oh. to reflect the challenges of growing up and facing the unknown during puberty, envy, embarrassment, and ennui, anyway, which is boredom, I yeah. think. Or um, indifference, I think. It yes, is. yeah. So it's set to be released Lack in June. Lack of empathy. Yeah, so like what yeah. teenagers are like, they have lack of empathy for other people's circumstances because it's all you don't understand them. me, you don't understand what's happening to me. It's all about me, yeah. Why can't you get it? <laughs> and I, for one, can't wait for it to hit the streaming platforms so I can watch it because, yeah, I won't be embarrassing myself either and going to the cinemas <laughs> to watch it. But it's, um, I would totally recommend watching the first one, especially on a hungover Sunday, just click it on. It's totally doable but the second one is causing all these fucking blow-up sensations on the internet and that's um that one i think it's just really cool how they're doing um movies that are 
based on real shit as well and trying to get people to you know trying to show kids that they understand what it's going what they're going through and all that stuff helping Um, them understand their emotions so i'm gonna just chuck something in just because it just made triggered me from what you were just talking about but have you um heard the stuff that's going on about hard solo at the moment i saw something coming up saying they've fucked up their marketing to kids or something Yes, so Tyler is obsessed with hard soul. Yes, right? I've had so, a, I've had a sip because of Tyler. Yeah, and so um, he's been drinking it since it came out. Like it came out, I don't know. Let's say for us at least, till it came to our awareness. I don't know when it actually came out, but to our awareness, I reckon maybe a month or two ago, it started appearing, right. and everyone's been talking about it. I'm sure it's been out for longer. I don't know how long it's been. Yeah. Out. Anyway, and so Tyler said to me, "Oh, you know, they've got like a hard solo now. Like I have to get it because he's a massive solo fan." So you gotta he work went in and hard it. to be a solo man. <laughs> oh my God, totally. That's totally Tyler. Um, so he's totally into it, loves it, you know, and a four pack is only 20 bucks. Um, so he, he's been drinking it. And then my brother-in-law came over last weekend and to pick Tyler up and he, they were talking about what drinks they were going to drink that night because they went out and hung out together. And um, he was like, oh, I'm dr- t- my brother was like, oh, I'm drinking the hard solo. And Tyler was like, oh, my God, I'm drinking the hard solo. And they were just like having yes. this huge <laughs> bonding moment about how much they love it. Um, but it's just come out this week that they're copping all this backlash because basically they're saying that they're branding a drink that's for, you know, a demographic that's youthful Soft as drink, an yeah. alcoholic beverage. And now they're going to change the name. Um, so I'm just trying to see what they've decided to change it to. I read it this week uh, that they've definitely changed it. But you remember the ads too where yeah. the guy oh was in God. the kayak yeah. going down a waterfall <laughs> and shit, like a fucking ravine? And there was one where it was like like a um, welder or something, wasn't yeah, it? And it was like got, sweat was coming off and it was like, I need a solo. A solo man. Um, so what have they changed it to? I'm trying to find it now. But they've just copped all this backlash from community groups who are saying you can't branded as a hard solo like because the solo is like a children's drink blah 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 which i think i get it but also it's it's more that soft drink is like a kids kids love soft drink like adults love soft drink too but kids you know it's a sugar drink um but what have they changed it to hard rated that's what they're changing it to Oh my god, that so sounds pornographic. I know. Right. <laughs> Hard rated. <laughs> but it's probably one of those things that kids will remember. Like we remember fags, the cigarettes, yeah, remember? Yeah. yeah the Not only fucking... were they called fags, but they were also fake cigarettes. Yeah. And everyone was like, you know, you get a packet the little of fags kids on the packet like, of the pack, but the yeah, little a, kid a smoking. Fake smoking. It. Yeah, with the yellow hair. <laughs> <laughs> and then they changed it to fads and it's not a cigarette. It's just like a candy stick It's just now. a white stick, no red top at all. But we remember, okay, people? We remember what yeah. they used to be. <laughs> so kids are going to remember. Do you remember when like Solo brought out their version that had alcohol in it? Yeah. And then it was Hard Solo, but then they changed it to Hard Red. Hard Red it used to be called Hard Solo because and you remember it was the derived from Solo. Big Boss cigars as well, which were the big yeah. pink Boss sticks <laughs> with the red end. And then they just took the red off that and called them Big Boss. <laughs> it was really like now we think oh my god like allowing children to have fake candy to cigarettes pretend. is just terrible <laughs> you're leading them into but, down a pathway yeah at the time i was like look at me smoke my cigarette yeah i'm like daddy <laughs> my candy cigarette i'm smoking like mummy yeah <laughs> I'm drinking my Ribena from a wine glass. I love it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Kids are always going to mimic adults though, right? Like it's just yeah. the way of life. It's I like remember anything. my bro and I snorting whiz fizz. Mm. <laughs> just the once. He only I did that did once. That. <laughs> Pretending it was cocaine, cutting up fucking whiz fizz. <laughs> <laughs> What movies or TV show were you watching at the time that passed that on to you? <laughs> I think I remember my cousins doing that, the boys doing that a few times, actually, to be fair. Yeah. Um, anyway, I just thought that was humorous, but it is. That is good. It is your turn. Fun. Okay. All right. So what do you know about the pay it forward phenomenon? So I remember like a movie came out years ago. Yeah. There's something about like, so for instance, someone does a good deed for you um 
they said they may say pay it forward they may not so then you drive through a drive through you ask what the person behind you ordered you pay for it and tell them to pay it forward when they come up they get their free meal and then they do a good deed to pay it forward the fact that they've had a good deed done for them so the film starred helen hunt Yes. And the little boy from Sixth Sense, Haley Osmond Smith, I think it is, or Haley Osmond something. Jay something, no. And also your very, very good friend, Kevin Spacey. Nostradamus. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Kevin Spacey, my, my, um, what do I call it? What, my your idol. alias. Yeah. <laughs> your alter ego, shall we say. <laughs> Sometimes when I get a little bit drunk. Anyway, so you're right. Like when I think of Pay It Forward, I think of that film which came out. I think it was in the late nine, nine, I was going to say 1900s. <laughs> he is a good friend of mine, so it's probably likely. <laughs> yeah, the na- late 90s, I think it was. Anyway, so, okay, so I'm going to talk to you about some My spirit animal. That's what no. I was trying to get. Yeah. <laughs> so I've been working at my new job for almost 12 months. And as you know, we've talked about it before, I can't go to work without my Zarafas that I get through the drive through mm-hmm. because it's near work. And I, I used to have my old coffee Triple place. Triple caramel shut latte down. with almond no, no. milk. <laughs> I get an almond milk cappuccino with an extra shot and cinnamon on the top, as well as the chocolate powder plus. I thought there was caramel in there or something. I used to. I weaned myself off all the sugary uh, drinks because way too many calories, bro. Yeah. Um. Anyway, so probably about, I'm going to say about four, five, maybe six months ago, I was going exactly what you were talking about. I was going through the Zarafa's drive through get to the window, go to pay, and the lovely girl, and the Cannon Stop Hill it. girls. Stop it. This happened to you. Just wait. So the lovely girl at the, and they're beautiful at the Cannon Hills Zarafa. So if anyone's ever listening to the podcast, because I'm always listening to it when I go through the drive through um, are listening to this. They are a beautiful bunch of people. They are Do you say to so them as you're going through, oh, my God, these stupid bitches saying what a hilarious. You should listen. <laughs> I should. I should. I should be like, <laughs> I talked about you on the podcast the other week. Um, anyway, so they're always beautiful. And I came up to pay and the chick said to me, oh you don't need to pay the person in front of you just paid for you you know like yay like have a great day your coffee's paid for and I was like what are you serious like oh my god that's like insane I can't believe that wow thank you so much so I don't have to pay she's like no no go ahead get your coffee off you go it's like oh wow and I I was just so surprised by it yeah I, and I didn't really know how to react and, and when I got to work I was like telling everyone and had the person me- gone before you had pulled up as well they were the directly in front of me so yeah. but we're in the cars like in a drive like, not like you can you. no well it's I, I think they had pretty much driven out by the time yeah. I got there so I couldn't even like give them a wave or anything anyway so that was all fine I was like whoa well that's just such a crazy experience you know thanks for giving me a great start to my day so I went through this week and I get to the window as per normal like I do every day of the week of a weekday and the girl says to me, oh, so the person in front has paid for you. Your coffee's free. And I was like, what? Oh, my God. Like, so, like, in less than 12 months, this has happened to me twice. Wow. Twice that I've had free coffees, right? But I feel like a terrible, terrible, horrible person because you haven't done it back. I haven't done it back. But also, I've been in line before where I've watched people who've held up the line where they've ordered three coffees, you know, three pieces of avocado on <laughs> toast. I don't want to pay it for it that much. <laughs> so, like, I'm super cheap and I'm saving for a mortgage. So, like, I don't want to be like, I'm going to pay for the car behind me and it's like 60 bucks, you know what I mean? But that makes me feel even more awkward and more guilty. But also, how do I say next time I go through... How much is the order behind me? Is the order behind me under $10? Or just say, how much is the order behind me? If they're like 20 bucks shot, it's okay. (laughs) But do you think, like, they must know because they've already done it twice to me. They must know that it happens. And probably because it's closer to the city, it's a frequent thing more so than maybe some of your smaller places. Yeah. So they'd probably be cool if I asked that. But I feel also really embarrassed to ask that and be like, look, if the person behind me just getting a coffee, I'm going to pay it forward. But if they're buying a big meal I'll do it next time like do you know what I mean like I just feel super awkward and embarrassed so now I'm like in this situation where I've been had free coffees twice and the guilt is just welling up inside me maybe it doesn't have to be in the coffee queue or anything like that so it's funny you mentioned this it's never happened to 
Vinny, well, it's never happened to me and it's never happened to Vinny while he's been with me. But we were down in um, Capella Bar Bottle Shop the other day and this lady was trying to bring out, this is months ago, actually. This lady was trying, asking how much a bottle of wine was. She only had a certain amount of money. And um, the guy said, it's blah, blah, 10 bucks or something. She goes, oh, no, I won't grab that. I'll just grab that. And I really kicked myself afterwards instead of just going, we've got it, you know, blah, blah, blah. Here, let's yeah. grab it for you. Really annoys me, but it's inspiring me next time we go through the Macca's drive through to just say, how much is the order behind us? Here, we'll get it. Yeah. Because you know that even though if it was a $60... going to cost you a fortune. Though. But even if it is a $60 sting, like when you're driving off, the $60 will sort of become a thing of the past and you'll just feel really, really amazing for doing something like that. Yes. So now here's me getting twice as lucky from this pay it forward gig, but, but not you, really being in, like not knowing but, how to reciprocate but it. But you also don't know that the person in front didn't say, has she just got a coffee? Yeah, yeah. cool. I'll buy it. <laughs> you know, it's not like you've been given a fucking feast as well and be like, oh, this is amazing. <laughs> you know, they're probably doing the same thing. But now is there's the pressure as well, like the pressure of me having to pay it forward twice now, like twice I have to find opportunities to pay it forward. I'm like, how do I do this? Like now it's just like racks me with guilt and is in my brain. Like I have to find a way to do it, but you're right. Like you could do it like in the Coles line, do you know what I mean? When you're all self-serving yeah. and stuff like that, you could be like, well, what do yeah, you do? Go up and go, just I'll tapping. just tap it. Yeah. And then you don't want it to be awkward either too, mm. but they probably are saying, oh, is it just a coffee here? I'll grab it. Yeah. So just even that, uh, is it yeah. just that they just got a coffee? Yeah, I'll grab it. Yeah. And maybe I could just do some banter and be like, look, I've been through twice. I've gotten free coffees like I just want. Because the other thing is like I think sometimes, you know, you could just give cash, but like they a lot of places don't take, like they take yeah. cash, but then the girl, poor girl behind there has to go, well, I've got 20 bucks. Shit. The next, the next order is seven. The next order is seven. And then I've got like, you know, yeah. this leftover change. What do I do with it? Like yeah. it's like. Yeah. But it's super lovely and I feel very, very like it. So when it happened to me, this week, it must have been Monday. I can't remember what day it was, but I was in the foulest PMSing mood wow. of everything. I was so just it was like, perfect timing. And then I was like, I got a free coffee, and I was just like, wow, that actually fucking just changed my whole yeah. outlook for the day. Yeah. Like I am in a completely different mood now. Like I feel like I can't be angry about anything or, yeah. you know, in a mood because I totally someone lift your just spirits. Ha- yeah. paid for my coffee. So it's so lovely, isn't it? That is nice. It is. But twice. Like, <laughs> tra- and hopefully thrice. <laughs> or uh, maybe it's just the Zarapas people just doing it to brighten people's day because like, that's how lovely they are. Or they're just like, look at the fucking face on this bitch. Give her a free coffee start. <laughs> so have you ever been through the line in Zarapas where it's like out the car park and the people come out of the shop? I've and never stand got with the a drive through coffee. Yeah, and so they come out with their iPad when the, the line's really long and stand at the end and take people's orders so that when you get to the window after you've been through that massive line, at least your coffee's ready and waiting. Right. Yeah, no, I've never, never got to drive through coffee. Never? No. Oh my God. I'd die without a drive through <laughs> coffee situation. Uh, All right, you're up, super bitch. All right, so I'm going to touch on Brittany's memoirs. Okay. So all I've seen is the memes about Justin Timberlake yeah. and something about her being pregnant and either losing or having an abortion I cover for that Justin's too. baby. Yeah. That's all I've just, and I don't know how accurate that is, but I've seen the book. It came out a few times. I'm like, maybe I just need to buy it yeah. and just well, read it just to say that I've read it and see what it's about. I think there's another option um, and that's getting the audible version of it, but I'll get to that. So, unless you've been living under a rock, you would have heard about Britney's memoirs coming out. And by the time this app drops, if you haven't heard about it, then you definitely are living under a rock. Mm-hmm. It's also on Audible with Michelle Williams doing the reading for it. <gasps> Fuck off. I love Michelle Williams. And it's meant to be fucking iconic the way she does it. So she impersonates, she does Justin Timberlake's voice and shit like that when they say about things that Justin says. There's all this shit blowing up over the internet about how great a job she does. And I think I'm going to have to join Audible 
or get that book just so I can hear it. I'm 100% doing it now. That's what I'm going to do this week and I'm just going to listen to it. No, I'm going to do it next week and listen to it on the way to work every day. Yeah, it's meant to be amazing. So anyway, there's been some pretty big revelations in it, some that have allegedly sent Justin Timberlake into a bit of a tailspin. Yes, I've heard Um, that. So here's some of the bigger revelations from it that I've enjoyed the most. First up, so she had an abortion while she was dating Timberlake. She says... It was a surprise, but for me, it wasn't a tragedy. I love Justin so much. I always expected us to have a family together one day. This would just, this would just be much earlier than I'd anticipated, Spears writes. But Justin definitely wasn't happy about the pregnancy. And he says we weren't ready to have a baby in our lives and that we were too young. Mm. If it had been left up to me, I never would have done it. And yet Justin was so sure that he didn't want to be a father. She added, describing it as the most agonizing thing that she'd ever experienced in her life. She also said that both her and Justin Timberlake both cheated on each other before breaking up, but before he broke up with her over text. And she specifically referenced photos catching him with a member of girl group, All Saints, Mm. in a car in London. And that one of her dancers told her, he had gestured toward gest, gestured towards a girl and says, yeah, man, I hit that last night, which makes the whole victim situation of Crimea River even more cringe considering he hit that last night. And it's like also that whole victim, not victim blaming, but the whole fucking thing back then too about how men could have done what they wanted and the but fact that she couldn't. cheated on him, she was the bad one, even yeah. though he hit it last night. Just for the record, though, it's her version of events, though. It's her one-sided story, though. There's always two sides to the of coin. Course. Well, three. His, hers, the truth. Yeah, <laughs> true dad. <laughs> so apparently there is a part in the book, and this is where Michelle Williams is meant to be iconic, where she was with Timberlake and Genu- Genuine walks around the corner or some shit or whatever. They see him in the streets and Timberland's like, oh yeah, for shiz, for shiz, Genuine. Genuine, what up, homie? And the way that Michelle Williams delivered it is meant to be epic and it blew up the internet. So the way she's mimics his voice and all that stuff is meant to be spot on. But she has to say that, oh yeah, for shiz, for shiz, Genuine, what's up, homie? It just makes him look like a big douche. She talks about her relationship with Federline, her backup dancer that she went on to marry and have two kids with. She says about the divorce there. Spears says that by 2006, one of her attorneys told her that Federline was going to file for divorce no matter what. She then says, I was led to believe that it would be better if I did it first so that I wasn't humiliated. I didn't want to be embarrassed. So in early 2000, in early November 2006, when Jaden was almost two months old, I filed the papers. Hang on. Gee, she got some terrible advice, didn't she? People were just Horrible telling try. her what to do all the time. And, and this is nearly like... 20 years ago. So she was super young. Mm. She says she later found out that because she legally set the divorce in motion, she found out that she would have to pay his legal bills as well as being held responsible in the press for having broken up my young family when the divorce was finalised in 2007. She says, so I was young and I made a lot of mistakes, but I will say this, I wasn't manipulative. (laughs) Yeah, I wasn't manipulative. I was just stupid. That's that's one thing Justin and Kevin ruined about me. I used to trust people, but after the breakup with Justin and then my divorce, I never really did trust people again, she writes. She talks about her decision to shave her hair, knowing that her long hair was a big part of what people liked her for. And by shaving it, it was her saying to the world, fuck you, you want me to be pretty for you, fuck you. She writes, I'd smile politely while TV hosts leered at my breasts while American parents say I was destroying their children by wearing a crop top, while executives patted my hand condescendingly and second-guessed my career choices, even though I'd sold millions of records, while my family acted like I was evil and I was tired of it, she writes. And that's when she just went fucking nuts. She learned the conservatorship... I know. She learned the conservatorship papers had been filed while she was in hospital and she wasn't allowed to get her IUD... IUD removed. That's that. Yeah, you know what that is. While she, IUD while she, is the one that goes up inside. Oh, is it? All right. 
While she was under the conservatorship, she wasn't allowed to have it removed. She had little control over her diet and finances during the conservatorship. And she said she began to start advocating for her conservatorship to end when she saw the hashtag Free Britney supporters on a talk show while she was in a mental health facility. And on the night of June 22nd, 2021, she called 911 from her home in California to report her father for her for conservatorship abuse. And one day later, she gave a rare public testimony before the court asking for it to be terminated. I love that the Free Britney movement helped her start her movement towards ending it all officially. I love that, like, that public outcry and stuff that people who did who actually loved her and supported her gave mm. her that power to stand up for herself and start moving forward. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, totally. It's just it's just a really fucking tragic story. That it's just like some little girl who was just, you know, pushed into the spotlight and then was manipulated so time. many times and then yeah. now she's got all these issues as an adult but who can blame her like totally she's yeah. just a person who's just been like pushed and pulled and pushed and pulled and had her life line. taken away from her been under all this control for so long and now she's free and she's dancing with knives mm, yeah i know well i'm looking at the um the wedding photo from i think it's this year she got married was it the beginning of this year or the end last year She's divorced um, now, though, isn't she? Yeah, I think so. And because um, they lost a baby as well. And so at that wedding was Madonna, Drew Barrymore, Paris Hilton, um, Donatella Versace, um, and Selena so Gomez. So all iconic, iconic power yeah, women. Yeah, exactly. Because like, even know. though, like, when you, when you say about Paris Hilton, like, uh, and I get that too, I know what you mean, but she would have been someone who would have been fucking manipulated and all that shit and told that she was a piece of shit for a well, while. Well, what about Drew? <laughs> yeah, I know, bless her. <laughs> but here's one thing that's hilarious that um, I, that's only come out recently. So you know her sister, Jamie Lynn? Mm. Have you seen that she's in the next UK? I've been UK? seeing a bit of that. Are you in what? What did you say? She's in the next UK, I'm a Celebrity, Get Me Out of Here. I didn't know that, but I know she's in a few telly movies at the moment. I think she's in a Christmas movie. She's in a bit of a love thing, but she's also come out openly and said that she's devastated about their relationship being the way. And all her kids are grown too. So her kids, I think... Were Who's born Jamie around Jamie's kids were born around because she had kids really young too, like super what, younger than Brittany did. Because remember, it was a big deal when she got pregnant, Jamie Lynn, right. um, because she was very, very young and she's still with the guy and they're married and they've got like kids that are like teenagers now or like not little kids anymore. Mm. Maybe yeah, well, I think Brittany's old. oldest is like 18 or something. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Cause I, I remember because she had her first one before I think I was pregnant. Preston, I was pregnant reading the TV guide when yeah. I was knocked up with Linky Lou. Um, and she had the boy, the first boy, and I think the second boy is a little bit younger than Link. Yeah. But the first yeah. boy is definitely older than Link. So Yeah. Well, anyway, so Jamie Lynn's in I'm a celebrity, and then they do the whole intro videos for them and she's there going so so she was seen arriving in brisbane airport recently on a way to fuck oh you they mean the aussie one no no it's a uk one but they filmed their one in australia ours oh. is filmed in south africa her intro video she says in it um that she's best known for being an actress and a singer she's been acting since she's eight and she loved it and it's like sure bitch you're best known for being britney's sister and that's it <laughs> and i think she's been roasted a lot recently like about her whole lifestyle choices and her relationship with her sister and like the whole fact that they're you know don't speak and yeah, she should have been a bit, well, I mean, who knows? Again, three stories, but you yeah, think and she, she was the baby too. But yeah, like, and if you think about the parental situation, mm. like, it must be quite dominating. Yes, Matt Bomer style. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Getting weak in the knees again, are we? <laughs> yeah. All right, your last one is stupid. Bitch. Okay, my last one. Where am I? Let me just bring it up. Okay. So let's talk about the Optus outage, shall we? Oh, look, that really um sent the world, uh, the nation astir, didn't it? So this is going to parlay into my how's your week been because when all the shit went down with my battery, 
um, and I couldn't, you know, like my car wouldn't work was the same day that the Optus outage happened. So I pretty much dropped my car off to get serviced. And then I went, we, so we woke up in the morning and we, what happened actually? That's right. None of our text messages. So we're with Optus, right? I am, I went with Optus a couple of years ago because they gave us this really amazing deal. Tyler was existing Optus. I think that Optus and Telstra are both evil enterprises and wish they didn't exist. Where but with Vodafone. There's no, um, there's no comparison, I think, in terms of the mobile Average. service that Telstra yeah. gives you compared to the others. And since I've been yeah. in Optus, I've noticed a massive difference. Yeah. So I swore I'd go back to Telstra. Although I must say our house internet with Telstra since we've been in this house and we're on a main road. So you would think there'd be enough shit going around and we're in a main yeah. area that we wouldn't have issues. You're not rural. We yeah. constantly have issues with Telstra and our internet here. Um, multiple times we've had heaps of problems with them. Our, inter- our TVs don't work properly because of the internet. It's just a, a shit show. Um, but we woke up on the morning to not being able to get text messages um, not having anything happen on our phones. And I was trying to send messages about work-related stuff because that's what I do in the morning before I go to work. And all my messages were coming back like, you cannot send this message. And we were like, what the fuck? So we were at home with our Telstra Wi-Fi. Yeah, because so you we couldn't were... even look up on your phone what's going on with Optus. No, yeah. so we could at least get onto Wi-Fi enough to understand that there was an Optus outage. But the moment we left the house, You're we fucked. had nothing. Yeah. We had no level of communication. So Tyler had to work. It's like the apocalypse. <laughs> My Wi Fi is totally down. <laughs> like the apocalypse. And so we couldn't communicate. And I ended up getting a lift with a girl from work that day. So Tyler dropped me to a house. But I woke up in the morning and Tyler's shift started a little bit later. And I was trying to message her to say, look, do you know what? I'm not going to get that lift anymore. Um, I'm just going to go, Tyler's going to drop me. But I didn't know if she got the message. And also we had a loose plan before I left work the day before. I said, do you mind if I come into work with you if Tyler drops me off? Is that cool? And we talked about it, but then we both got really busy and she left when I was doing something and I we didn't actually confirm the plans. It wasn't So when I, when I got to her house, I was like freaking out going, she Is might she not here? know I'm coming, but I couldn't yeah. go to work thinking she was waiting for me as well. Yeah. So it was like I had to go there first, but I couldn't get through no matter what I did. And because we'd already left the house and I had to drop the car off, we were just like, like we had a schedule, like we were going to be yeah. super late through work. Through everything and, fucking into the and we were just like, And it was just like a mess. So anyway, so luckily I, I rocked up at her house. She was waiting for me. She was like, oh, my God, I've sent you all these messages. You're not coming back. And she didn't know about the Telstra outage yet. I mean, the Optus outage because she wasn't on Optus and it was super early in the morning. And then I got there. I was like, oh my God, you're not going to believe what's happening. There's an Optus outage, blah, blah, blah. So then Tyler couldn't communicate with me because he was out at work and his phone didn't work to tell me what was happening with the car. Every time I rang the mechanic, they weren't answering because they were having Optus outages, so they couldn't oh, connect. Almighty. So I was at work. It was going, quite the shit show, wasn't it? <laughs> it was a complete shit show. So then I get to work, and a lot of the stuff that I do, because I do a lot of like high-level banking, I'm talking like millions of dollars get transferred from me per day, but I have all these security apps on my phone yeah. that I need to put multiple security pins in that yeah, come yeah, through yeah. my phone every couple of seconds. Um, because of how much I deal with and how much security risk there is. So I couldn't access it, any of it. And we had a Wi-Fi, but no one really uses Wi-Fi at work anymore, right? Because it all runs through the system. And our work system was run through, I don't know if it was Telstra or whatever it was. It wasn't Optus, but it didn't help the fact that I was impacted. So yeah. my boss was running around going, I need to get Sky the Wi-Fi password because <laughs> no she idea. needs her mobile phone to work <laughs> so she can approve all this stuff that needs to happen. So it was just complete chaos when I got into work. And it was just, and then Ty was trying to like get through to me and he's sending me emails and trying to find hotspots that he could get into. And for the first like two hours that I was at work, I was hotspotting yeah, off I was people's say, phones at work. You'd have to hotspot, yeah. Just to actually be able to do stuff until they got me the Wi-Fi password. Imagine people like businesses that were Optus internet in their work and shit like that. Yeah. And had and all so Optus plants on all their work phones and shit like that. There it would was have been chaos. thousands of stories. So then I brought up the feed at work, which is literally um, ABC News. 
and they were refreshing the feed like every 30 seconds telling them what they knew so they were investigating and trying to get the information out to the people that were affected through this feed and all the stories that were coming through they were updating every 30 seconds with a different story that they had and some of the stories that were coming through were horrific like cancer patients waiting to find out if their appointment where they needed to be at what hospital because they needed certain treatment and they weren't able to connect and it just goes to show full on it just goes to show what chaos the world will go into if all wi-fi just dropped or we rely on it for everything that we do every mechanism in our society runs off wi-fi like we went to try to get breakfast um and we pulled up because we were at the shops before after we dropped the car off and i was like what if the macca's wi-fi runs off optus i'll be able to go through there because all the f boss is out yeah like you know it was just like so crazy and we walked into the shops and some of the shops weren't open because they run off off optus and they couldn't connect to anything and it was just complete yeah. millions of dollars lost and then there was all these small businesses posting as well about how um you know they couldn't trade at all they had to put a sign up cash only no one has cash anymore on yeah. them so they lost so much business in trading and these yep. were the smaller business imagine the bigger businesses and then optus comes out like you know a couple of days later going we're so sorry we're going to give you 240 gigabytes. gigabytes. <laughs> so, I don't uh, need thanks. any more fucking gigs, you dummies. <laughs> I'm on unlimited gigs for fuck's sake. That's I pay for to ask for yeah. it already. I don't need an extra yeah. 200 200 gigs. <laughs> I don't use my gigs a month anyway. It's fine. <laughs> yeah, I know. They got roasted for that too, didn't they? Mm. But it was an absolute shit show. And then I loved like the releases were coming out from the CEO from Optus and she was like, we actually really don't know what's going on. We're doing everything that we can, but she just kept posting him that she must have been having the day from, from absolute hell. hell. <laughs> and I read that she'd only just taken over, I think, at the beginning of the year. Oh, the poor bitch. And she must have just been like, fuck my life. <laughs> she probably had a fucking RDO that day too. She's like, oh, I'm going to get my nails done, spa treatment books. It's going to be amazing. <laughs> She'll probably get sacked over it. Like, That's fucked too. You don't, really, you don't really stick out something that huge when you're at that level. Like even yeah. if it wasn't your fault, even if it was your underlegs, everything rises to the top, right? Mm. Yeah, but it's fucked that she'll have to, I mean, obviously, as you said, the buck's got to stop somewhere. But if it's something completely out of her control and the fact that she's a woman as well will probably fucking go against her. Yeah. Well, it doesn't really matter at the end of the day. If you're managing a company and things go to shit, someone's got to be blamed for it. And it's going to be you in that. Yeah. When, when it's nationwide. That, them's the breaks <laughs> when you're that high up. It's like, <laughs> it, must, it was just like a pure timing thing. I'm sure she had nothing to do with it. I'm sure it was a dumb IT department or whatever they, whatever they end up thinking it was. Tyler keeps saying it was terrorists. Like they keep saying it wasn't terrorist. They were hacked. It's like they're not hacked. Some dummy just didn't turn the on switch on something in the background. He forgot to back up last night. Yeah. <laughs> well, thanks for listening. We hope you enjoyed our take on the shit that really piqued our interests over the last four weeks. Now, you're going to want to make sure you tune in next week for a very special episode where we have our first special guest interview. We welcome Bill Edgar, the Coffin Confessor, to join us, stupid bitches, for some drinks and chats about his very interesting, sometimes touching, sometimes confrontational profession in crashing funerals, doing house sweeps, and passing on messages for the recently departed. You're not going to want to miss this. Trust us. It's great. But dear listeners, as always, please remember, if you are whining, you're winning. Good night, stupid bitches. Good night. What a great... Yeah, that stupid bitch. Mm -hmm. He's a stupid bitch. What a stupid bitch. That stupid...